Atlantis, the lost continent, the lost city, the submerged city. It is known by many names, but one thing about it is certain. The tale of Atlantis has become a part of urban literature as a synonym and sometimes the very definition of utopia. The luscious green foliage with the waves lapping on the shores, the huge marble architecture and its people with their highly superior culture living in harmony. Atlantis has it all. The question, however, arises, how did the legend of Atlantis come about? The earliest and only reference to Atlantis was given by the Greek philosopher Plato around 650 BC in his work Critias and Timaeus. Plato talked about a massive and technologically advanced nation called Atlantis that warred against ancient Athens with their superior naval fleets. Many have claimed that Plato created this fictional nation as a warning against the hubris of nations and to create the idea of his perfect state through his work Republic. Flemish cartographer Abraham Ortelius was one of the first people to believe that the continents were at one point joined together, and they theorized that Atlantis was none other than the New World, and that it didn't sink, but instead just drifted away. Building on that, Sir Thomas More in his book Utopia showed similarities between Atlantis and America, and claimed that the New World was an imaginary land of great power. Renowned Mesoamerican scholars Charles Etienne Brasseur de Bourbourg and Augustus Le Plongeon, in highly racist undertones, would not believe that the Mayan and Aztec civilizations were responsible for creating the buildings that now lay in ruins in Central and South America. The most famous theory about Atlantis came from a US congressman, Ignatius Donnelly, in 1882. Donnelly was inspired by early works in Mayanism, and in his book Atlantis, the Anti-Diluvian World, he tried to establish Atlantis as the source for all the world's cultures. He drew parallels between stories of creation from the New World and the Old, stating that the Garden of Eden existed in Atlantis, and that the Great Flood was responsible for sinking Atlantis. Another important figure in the legend of Atlantis was Elena Petrovna Blavatsky, a Russian psychic and the founder of the Theosophical Society in the 1870s. The society propagated the ideas of New Age and other spiritual movements. Blavatsky combined Western Romanticism with Eastern religious concepts to write The Secret Doctrine in 1888, which she claims was based on secret knowledge from Atlantis. Blavatsky was inspired by the 18th century astronomer Jean-Sylvain Bailey, who had orientalized the myth of Atlantis in his mythical continent of Hyperborea, which was a continent in northern Europe that consisted of giant godlike beings. Perhaps the most effective usage of Blavatsky's fiction was the Nazis reshaping her version of the Aryan race for the ideological backing for their subsequent genocide. This perversion of the Aryan race to provide superior racial backing was a topic traversed by people such as Julia Evola, who in 1934 spoke of Atlanteans as Iberboreans or Nordic supermen, originating from the North Pole. Alfred Rosenberg in his work Myth of the 20th Century spoke of the Nordic Atlanteans and the Nordic Aryan master race. This was a highly contradictory belief, as several esoteric and theosophic groups believed that Atlanteans were non-Caucasian, dark-skinned people. Edgar Case was a supposed psychic who went into a trance and claimed to heal people. He claimed that his subjects were reincarnations of Atlanteans who had a shared consciousness. He was able to talk to these dead Atlanteans and gave a description of the lost continent through their accounts and recorded them in his Akashic records. Increased acceptance of the continental drift theory and plate tectonics in the 1960s demonstrated that there was no possibility of a continent bigger than Africa or Asia to exist submerged without being noticed in the geologically recent past. Julia Anas a professor of philosophy at the University of Arizona, weighed in by bringing to light that Plato was using a popular fictional device when talking about Atlantis. She believes that we should be using the example of Atlantis to examine our ideas of government and power rather than searching the seabed. Plato also uses the example of Atlantis as the might and powerful nation that falls due to its own notions of might as a warning to his 4th century contemporaries against the dangers of striving for naval might. There have been many proposed locations for Atlantis, 
The prominent ones are in the Atlantic Ocean due to the similar sounding names, and Plato describing Atlantis as near the Pillars of Hercules. Other islands, like Sardinia, Crete, Santorini, Sicily, Cyprus, and Malta, have also been proposed. The most popular one is that Atlantis exists in the Bermuda Triangle due to the air of mystery shrouding this location. Many also believe that the Terra eruption in the 16th or 17th century BC caused a large tsunami that devastated the nearby Minoan civilization of Crete, which could be the inspiration for the myth of Atlantis. After all is said and done, nobody of respectable scientific standing still believes in the existence of Atlantis. However, the idea of Atlantis is commonly used in literature as a metaphor for something that is completely unattainable. Australian poet Gary Catalano wrote in a prose poem in 1982 about Atlantis as a vision that sank under the weight of its own perfection. Thank you for watching us. Please subscribe our channel. Press the bell icon for notification. Like and share.